The Centre's demonetization scheme to unearth black money is no doubt a welcome move. But there are certain logistic issues to the scheme. So how will demonetization of 500 and 1000 rupee notes impact demand for gold? The nexus between real estate and the black money is, you know, all well known. The sheer size of the value of these notes, that is the old 500 and 1000 notes, and the patchy penetration of bank branches are likely to pose some logistic issues, at least in the interim. Let us look at some numbers first. The total currency in circulation right now is about 17 and a half lakh crore. Of this, over 86% is denominated in 500 and 1000 rupee notes. This means that about 15 lakh crore of currency will have to be replaced by the new notes. Now this is of course a daunting task. And this replacement to happen within a short period of 50 to 70 days is likely to cause certain issues. It is very simplistic to assume that there will be an equal flow of people across bank branches. It is true that in India there are about 1.3 lakh branches across the country. But if you look at the distribution of the savings account itself, you can see that there will be a lot of concentration of people in certain branches and in certain areas. Over 60% of the savings deposit is actually in urban and semi-urban and metro areas. And only 18% is actually in rural areas. Now considering that rural economy is predominantly a cash economy, there is going to be a lot of logistic issues in reaching out the new notes to these areas within the short span of time. Also, only select bank branches are authorized to stock notes and coins. These are called currency chests and these are around 4,000 all across the country. But about 2,700 belong to SBI and its associate banks alone. The rest, 1,000 odd currency chests belong to the other nationalized banks. And only about 180 actually belong to private sector banks. So you can imagine there could be logistic issues of distributing these notes across various set of banks. Considering that the center has placed a lot of caps on the withdrawal and deposit of money across bank branches and post offices, you can expect some currency vacuum in the interim. So how will demonetization of 500 and 1000 rupee notes impact demand for gold? First, as this is a move to completely wipe out black money from the system, the that portion of demand for gold which has been coming from people who have been holding money at home will die out now. But uh, there's no estimate of how much of, you know, how much of demand for gold has been coming from all such people. So basically you have to wait till December to see what is the impact of this move on the gold market as such, India's gold market as such. But looking at the reaction of people immediately post this move, you know, on Tuesday when there was a rush to the gold shops to pick up as much as they could, there are two inferences which I could make. One, uh, from now on there will be a lot of people who will look at gold as a safe haven. Yeah. All those people who were holding uh, cash at home yeah. will now try to hold it as gold because they have lost confidence on paper currencies. That is that is one inference I can make. Second thing is, uh, though there will be a loss in sales for all these gold shops, jewelry companies over the medium term, the December quarter sales will be good. You know, uh, last time when a similar move was made by the government, you know, to demonetize all high value, high denomination currencies, what happened was people rushed to dwellers to buy gold. They told them, okay, you gave me backdated bills. So this possibility is not ruled out this time again. What will be critical for the industry as such is their uh, growth or is their performance post December. If you are an investor who has put money in jewelry stocks, uh, I'll tell you you need not panic much, you know, because I don't see a very sharp drop in demand. The gold consumption market in India as such over the last two three years has moderated, has shrunk a lot. You know, from close to thousand tons in 2013, it has come down to eight. 
48 tons in 2015 and this year it could be even lower so all these two years you know all the uh, listed players at least from their numbers that we could see uh, Titan, Tangamaya Jewelry, PC Jewelers they have adjusted to this you know new normal so uh, there's not a much of a, a long term impact and long term negative impact for the industry or for the listed gold companies there is pain of course but it will be only for the short term The nexus between real estate and the black money is, you know, all well known. This is primarily so in the secondary market where there are a lot of uh, transactions that are happening. If we look at it from the primary market, which is, you know, where a project is developed and put up for sale directly by the developer to the uh, end user, even there, there is a lot of use of uh, money that is unaccounted for. There are a couple of uh, reasons for that. One being the promote the uh, project promoters do not have access to um, established sources of uh, funding so they have to borrow at very high rates outside and they resort to going to black money as a source of funding there and also in the system for uh, getting any uh, approvals and you know various processes there is a lot of unaccounted stuff that one has to pay to to speed up the process and uh, get the job done so unless there are systemic changes that are put in place and uh, there is complete transparency and accountability at all levels the use of black money may continue to exist the uh, current push may lead to you know some sort of squeeze in the short run but but eventually you know since money is needed and if it's not coming from legitimate sources you know it will be sourced from others other places